Okay, hi everyone. I'm Dr. Praveen, and uh, I would like to welcome everyone to today's M Perio introduction class. Um, so, I think a lot of familiar uh, names and faces, Sajit sir, Karthik sir. How are we all? Good, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Okay, so um, so we we're gonna have a so basically. Uh, this is a session for those people who have been constantly asking us what Mperio and what MNDO and what these uh, membership in Royal College exams are all about. So, um, so me and Dr. Tamina, uh, so Dr. Tamina, welcome. Uh, so we have put together a small presentation for you all to uh, understand what this is uh, all about. Um, so the Royal College um, exams are basically accreditation exams, which has uh, uh, given a lot of uh, uh, validity to your uh, postgraduate training, right? So I'm guessing most of you are uh, periodontists. Um, so because the invite has been exclusively sent over for periodontists. So if you are periodontist, this session would be very useful for you. Um, so a bit about my journey so that uh, you guys understand what this exam is all about. It will just take 10-15 minutes. Um, so in case you guys have anything to ask me, kindly feel free to unmute yourself and uh, you know, just interrupt me. So, um, so in 2014, I completed my MDS from Bapuji Dental College. And uh, in 2014-15, I joined as senior lecturer. And I was also a part-time consultant. Um, but then I realized that, you know, um, I, I, my uh, potential was uh, not utilized to the full. Uh, I wanted to, you know, prove to the world that I'm much more than this. So in 2015, I changed my institute. I went to Pondy and uh, uh, started training myself in microscope. And that's where I realized that there is an examination for endodontists. Um, so I'm, I'm an endodontist by, uh, you know, by specialization. And I realized that all these specialties in dentistry actually has um, an uh, exam which we can give in the UK. And uh, this exam has a lot of weightage. So in 2015, I started my preparation. In 2018, I got my MNDO RCS degree. And at that point of time, I think I was the first guy who was uh, residing in India to get this degree. And in 2019, you know, I... Uh, open my clinic and then, you know, I became a full-time practitioner. So we have been training a lot of students for this particular exam called the MNDO RCS. Um, also, the same exam is there for periodontists, prosthodontists, orthodontists, uh, et cetera, right? Um, so let me tell you what this thing is all about, the uh, Royal College of uh, Surgeons. So mo most of you would be wondering what this college actually is. So the Royal College actually was set up, you know, uh, almost 500 years back, almost 700 years back, there were uh, uh, barbers who were doing a lot of surgical procedures. So uh, uh, after the uh, science, uh, the, the uh, era where everything became science, uh, pioneers like Androis Pare and uh, um, Anton von Leeuwenhoek and Vesalius, all of these people made uh, medicine more of a scientific field rather than just simple surgical um, stuff. So with the help of their findings, the first college in the world was started, the incorporation of surgeons and barbers, which later became into the Royal College of Surgeons. The Edinburgh one was started first. It was started in 1505. Later on, the other colleges were started. Now, their entire goal is to regulate and promote highest standards of surgical education, not just in the UK, but all around the world. And that's what they've been trying to do, right? Worldwide spread of education and accreditation. Now, how do they do it? They basically conduct a lot of workshops. They supervise training that happens in the UK, especially. And then they examine um, uh, students who are passed out. And also they uh, do a lot of uh, internal collaborations and external collaborations to bring this about. Now, all this is not so important, but what is 
uh, what you need to know is that uh, any Royal College degree is just a degree to tell to the world, or at least in the UK, that your degree is equivalent to a degree that was done in the UK. Uh, okay, uh, but they do not give you a direct license to actually practice, uh, which uh, which can act only be given by the GDC or the General Dental Council in the UK. Okay, and also they don't they do not uh, directly deal with patients, nor do they. Um, you know, they, they don't have anything to do with the patient, right? It's all about accreditation. So all of you ask me how to become a part of this uh, Royal College of Surgeon. The only way that we know for specialists to become a part of the Royal College of Surgeons is through exams. And uh, these exams are of um, uh, three categories. One is for the general dentist level, BDS, or sometimes uh, there are exams for people who have completed BDS with an additional diploma, one or two years of short course. If you have done, there are exams for that as well. In fact, there are almost five new exams that are coming up for people with BDS and a diploma degree. Okay. And of course, there are a, a slew of exams for MDS doctors as well. So we look at these uh, uh, one by one and there are intercollegiate uh, examination. That is basically, it means either two or more than two of these colleges combine and take up these exams. And uh, there is something called membership and fellowship. So membership is the basic uh, degree which you get. After five years or three years, you can either apply or you can give another exam and become a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons. So you must have seen a lot of these uh, uh, surgeons, especially the general surgeons, they get MRCS, FRCS out. So I'm talking about something of the same order. For BDS grads, we have something called the Faculty of Dental Surgery. Okay, so this is called FDS, and the degree that these people give is called the MFDS. Okay, so this is strictly for people who have completed their BDS. So people who have completed the MDS kindly do not go for this exam. Do not waste your time with it because it's um, because you know it doesn't have too much of weightage. It, all that it helps you to do is to get a good PG seat in the UK. Okay. Um, there's another degree called MAGDS. I don't recommend anyone giving this. Doesn't have too much of value there. For people who have done their um, orthodontic therapy, a two-year course in ortho, they can give the diplomat in orthodontic therapy exams, uh, which which expects you to have an ortho training of at least nine months, or an implant dentistry exam. It's called the DIP implant dentistry RCS. You need three years of training post BDS for this. Uh, there are exams coming up for endo, uh, prosto, and perio for people who have good ex at least one year of experience post BDS in endo, prosto, and perio as well, right? So, but these have not yet come out. It's going to come out soon for MDS. So most of you are periodontists. So what you guys have to look at is the MRT exam. So the membership in restorative dentistry is split up into three exams. The membership in endodontics, periodontics, and prosthodontics, MPROS, MPERIO, and MNDO. Now, these exams have um, uh, give you the uh, equal, it's almost like an equivalent of doing MDS in the UK. So, this is the end point in your specialty training. So, all the MDS, all these MDS exams have tremendous weightage, not just in the UK, even in other countries. Right? So, literally, all these specialties in dentistry have an, um, uh, all the clinical specialties have an option in the UK uh, for this uh, membership exams, right? Um, all right, so if you guys have any questions, you can ask me, otherwise we'll move on, right? So, um, so basically all these exams, they, they are very similar. They uh, intend to gauge your knowledge and understanding and uh, they check your clinical competence, but they do not check your practical skills. They do not expect you to do a crown preparation in the exam or anything, right? They, they're just looking at your knowledge, your treatment planning, your, um, your, your, you know, your uh, evidence-based dentistry and these kind of things is what they test. So it's more of a VIVA-based exam. A lot of VIVA interactions will be there in these exams, okay? Um, so there's only one exam which the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh conducts. It's called the LDS. 
Uh, and these guys, uh, I'm sorry, the Oracle Research of England uh, uh, take up these exams. It's called the LDS. And this is the only exam which actually allows you to practice in the UK. Okay. Now, like I uh, told you in the beginning, the advantage of membership in endodontics, prosthodontics, or periodontics is that this denotes the end point of training in your in in the UK. So it it has a lot of weightage in the UK. It's it means that if you finish your M and O or M period or M prosto, you'll be allowed to register yourself as a specialist in the UK. Not just in the UK, a lot of other countries like the Middle East, from the Middle East and the East actually recognizes this degree and gives you a lot of weightage and helps you, you know, um, certify yourself based on this degree in these countries. Uh, certain developed nations like Australia and Canada also recognize these degrees, but they do not give you a direct weightage for it. They, but it is an add-on to your CV. Uh, so come, here comes the main question most of you asked me in the first place. I'm already done with my MDS studies. Why should I take up another exam, right? Uh, most of us don't know what we want. And uh, uh, we, are, we are sometimes lost after a few years of MDS. Uh, this is because dentistry is ever evolving. We need to keep up with, you know, the the uh, newer trends, and we need to keep updating ourselves. Um, so this degree really helps us in updating ourselves. Um, we'll get in contact with a lot of international people. It will help you uh, understand the vacancies and the job potentials in various countries. Uh, in fact, you know. Uh, you cannot even become an examiner for the Royal College of Surgeons. The pay will not be great, but then you get a lot of information from such wonderfully gifted, intelligent people. And also, these uh, the, the membership gives you access to travel grants, research grants, and uh, if, if you have any uh, plans of going to the UK for higher education, you have to do one of these. It, it gives you a lot of weightage for your uh, CV. Uh, in, the, in India, if you might wonder why should I do this exam? That's a good question because our uh, uh, degree in uh, outside India may not have good uh, weightage, but then and MDS in India has has uh, has good potential. But um, one of the main reasons why I would like to emphasize that in India also it is important is that uh, your clinical treatment planning and your decision making drastically improves after this exam. Okay, maybe I can give you some examples at the end of the session. Um, also, you know, most common reason why people give these exams is for that excellent post nominals. Uh, you can put the MRCS or MND or RCS or whatever next to your name. It's, it's excellent. Um, you also get access to a wide array of books and uh, seminars and webinars that uh, the Royal College has to offer, which is, which is quite a good collection. Uh, they do have uh, quite, uh, especially in endo and aesthetic dentistry, they do have a pretty good, uh, and restorative dentistry, they, ha they have a good collection of materials there. So, um, so I hope you guys understood why this, if this exam would be ever useful to you, you know, if, if you feel in the future it may be useful for you, I feel you should be going for it. It will be worth the effort. So um, I'll just tell you briefly about my journey with the Royal College. Um, so in 2015, when I was going through this exam, I, I just stumbled upon this exam. I didn't know there was an exam called MN at that time. And uh, I went through the guidelines and everything, and it, uh, I, I realized that I was eligible to give this exam. So basically, to be eligible for this exam, you need to complete three years of your postgraduate training. Right? So I think most of you are, most of you are MDS doctors. Um, so if you want to be eligible, sometimes they'll ask you for your uh, CV, your log book, academic timetable, etc. Don't worry about this. We have a set, uh, um, you know, template for all these. If you guys are interested, I can share this with you. Um, you you will be able to uh, send this, and you'll be able to you know clear the exam. Now I had few doubts regarding the academic timetable and log book, so I asked few of these, um, you know, these mentors of mine. And they helped me with it, and I created my timetable and stuff. So then I worked on my uh, on, on all these documents, and then I gave it to them. And 2015 in March, I sent these documents, 
and uh, they got back to me in about three months and they said yeah i am eligible for the exam you know i can this exam and uh, then i started preparing for the exam i went through the blueprint for this exam it, it did look very intimidating because there were like six components for this exam where i had to present four of my cases and there were uh, like you know crazy amount of uh, studying to do i knew that uh, there was a written paper on clean cases oral examinations and stuff and even the portions that they said is important was literally everything everything in endo not just endo even cross the and perio as well so similarly even now if you are preparing for end perio there will be a lot of components from cross to and endo as well which you guys need to prepare so then i started to search if there are any uh, you know previous question papers any pattern of examination that i can get hold of so that i can start preparing in a better way and you know these uh, guys who were so prompt in answering to all my mails they once i sent when once i asked for sample papers or sample case presentations they just didn't bother replying it almost like it felt like they almost went into a flight mode so so then i had to you know search outside for uh, people's help so i started looking out for private training options i found that there was a website called the royal dentist institute who was doing this but then they were ex exorbitantly expensive and uh, they were from a different country so i didn't know how good it would be and i always had this uh, i was always skeptical i thought you know let's self prepare let's start working on my own uh, cases and stuff so then i started working on my cases i i start i had to prepare like four cases um and you know stuff like that so then i realized that you know most of my cases were bad so i had to re record all my cases which i had to present so i had to present two endo cases and two perio cases so i joined indira gandhi institute of dental sciences in 2015 and i started working under a mentor to uh, start preparing my cases how i felt like i was always in a blind alley i didn't know uh, which direction to go how to prepare these cases uh, i had a help from a friend uh, through facebook who had completed it but um it, uh, to, he had completed his mndo in 2016 but but still it, he he didn't help me that much you know he he did try to help me but then you know he just gave few tips which kind of uh, uh, didn't help that much um then i decided you know let's you know whatever it is i'm going to give the exam i gave my exam in 2017 i applied uh, just in the last moment i got in and i gave the uh, submitted my cases and stuff um you know so all these things are not very important because right now you don't have to Uh, send these cases right now the the exam pattern has changed but i'm just showing you what i went through so in 2017 i gave my first attempt i prepared quite seriously because they told me it will be similar to mds exam so you know i prepared exactly how i would prepare for my mds exam but i focused more on the endodontics i, I didn't even realize that they're going to ask questions from prosto and perio so it was it was a pretty uh, you know tense moment for me but you know the atmosphere was very calm the examiners looked very reassuring we had the first paper was a restorative paper second paper was endo paper and uh, i realized that you know it was a very lengthy paper i didn't have too much time and almost half the paper was believe it or not it wasn't endo or prosto or period it was a lot of on general dentistry so i, I realized that you know i didn't prepare enough second day was a lot of uh, uh, examination i mean sorry the second day was a viva from two examiners who went through my case histories and then they asked a lot of organized questions they were very polite but i did get caught in a couple of cases for example this case i didn't manage the biological with well which in our country we we rarely give too much importance to it but you know it's it's very important to look at biological with i didn't know at that time but yeah so and even the grand viva was Uh, quite okay um the, the day 3 was unseen case so basically unseen case means they're going to give you uh, sets of uh, records of patient like x-rays and uh, photograph and you are expected to go through it for 15 minutes and they're going to ask you questions for 15 minutes so there was a restorative case and an endo case and uh, at the end of the day after my exam i felt they were very practical the exam was very clinically oriented but i'm uh, i felt like i did okay but i was still not sure whether i would i would clear but however at the end of the day i knew one thing for sure 
I I made great friends, and uh, it was an experience that I couldn't forget. Right. Um, at the uh, uh, end of two months, we got our results, and then without any surprise, I understood that you know my preparation was not enough. I failed my exam. Um, however, I passed my written paper, but I failed all the you know the case examinations and the viva part. So I realized that my preparation was inadequate, and uh, I I didn't pay attention to the interdisciplinary areas, right? So I got my feedback, and it and it was a very depressing situation in my life. And at that point, I felt I'm going to be in India. Why? What is the big deal with these exams? Let's just quit. So the at, at I, I was in a dilemma whether to give it up or not. I had I wanted to give it up because it was very intimidating. It was a very long process, an expensive process, and it doesn't have too much weightage in India. But I wanted to give it again because I came so close, and it has such good international recognition. It might help me sometime in the future. And there was something inside me saying that you know you you can do this. So uh, this inner instinct was coupled with a lot of positive people in my life, my wife, my Good friend, Dr. Aswant and Dr. Santosh, they really motivated me and they pushed me to for my next attempt. So I started preparing again with help of these friends, and I changed my cases. I changed my approach to the preparation, and uh, I started, you know, doing positive affirmations and stuff, full, full on preparation. And then I gave mock exams also. In fact, my wife helped me uh, uh, set the question paper, and she timed the papers and. I read the right literature. I read BDJ articles and exam-oriented books. I also made some flashcards and uh, I made my own notes this time. So all these things helped. These are some books that I went through. You guys can also go through. And uh, in November 2018, I gave my next attempt. I felt more confident. I, I was more prepared. I knew how the exam is going to be. I knew whatever the exam is going to throw at me, I am better prepared. So endo went on well. Um, I was even, in fact, able to quote references and stuff. So, um, and day two was, you know, we had a full mouth rehabilitation case, instrument retrieval. So overall, again, a good attempt. I made more friends. It was a good uh, feeling at the end of the day, and and the feeling showed in the results as well. I passed in 2018. I was extremely elated. It was probably the best day of my life, and. Um, in fact, I scored the second highest in that exam as well, which was quite surprising. This was my results that time, and uh, at that time, the pass percentage was quite low. Just twenty-five percent of them passed. I think around uh, fourteen of them gave, and just four of us passed. It was, uh, it's usually that's how this exam goes, right? So finally, I became a member, and uh, you know, got my degree and stuff. So, uh, what did I learn from my uh, journey? Was that um you know the difference between failure and success is just one small uh one small thing if if i had proper guidance i might have passed in the first attempt okay but still i had to guide myself and pass and uh, uh there's a good, there's a very important saying that if there is no internal change within yourself then there's no point in actually getting uh, passing an exam or getting a degree it doesn't make any difference so what i felt was after the exam i had more evidence based knowledge i could use this in my day to day practice it actually changed the way i speak to my patient as well and i realized that you know problem based learning and training is lacking in india and we have to bring it up so since then i've been training all my students with problem based learning and training so i expect all my faculty members and everyone to do the same uh, i realized that indians are very skilled they are very good at doing uh, complex restrictive work but they somehow lose out on the protocol they somehow fail in following certain protocols right so we realize that all indians need a little bit of guidance and then they are able to pass this exam in fact um, to be um, you know I'm, i'm very proud to say that four students who gave the exam last year out of the six students who gave all of them cleared although the pass percentage was quite less four of them cleared in fact this year also we had we had pretty good success rate uh, out of the four people who passed the mndo exam in the march exam which just happened last month um out of them uh, two of them were our own students right so 
uh, Indians are very knowledgeable, just that they need a little bit of guidance. So that's the reason we started the MRD Training Academy, where we train students with M Endo, Perio, and Prosto. We've been doing the M Endo part from quite some time, and uh, yeah, this this academy is called the Royal Dream Academy, and uh, the current program that we are starting from next month is the M Perio program, and the main objective of this program is for giving you the confidence and for you to for us to guide you to the right path on how to prepare for these exams right to make you from i can to i can right to make you um, motivate and to take you in the right direction right because see we cannot spoon feed all the information nobody can do that you are all specialists you have studied 3 years of your subject but then what we aim to do is just slightly modify your preparation and help you achieve your dreams okay so what we have to offer for the m period training is um about uh, sorry not 5 weeks we are will be giving you uh we are changing this a bit we'll be giving you 12 weeks of training this was the initial plan but then we changed this a bit we'll be giving you 12 weeks of training about one or two days per week in all these specialties that are required for you to clear the m period exam and we'll be giving you practice cases and vivas and in the last uh, week or after the regular training we'll be giving you grand viva uh, and a grand theory mock okay theory mock and a long short case unseen cases mock okay so basically we'll be mimicking the entire exam so that you have you're pretty confident by the time you uh, enter the exam hall so we'll be doing this by online lecture so the entire thing would be online we'll be doing it uh, through online we'll be doing it through whatsapp chats if you have any doubts you can always do a whatsapp call we'll be doing through regular examinations we'll be providing a slew of pdfs and uh, important articles and textbooks which will help you uh, you know uh, almost 80% of the books that you require for the exam will be given to you right and also will be uh, having putting you in a, in a whatsapp group where all the mperio students will be together and you guys can discuss all the cases and uh, um, things from time to time so our uh, faculty are always there to um, guide you through the right literature dr tamima will be uh, our chief uh, mperio mentor so she has completed her um, mperio to 2022 she's completed a four years of uh, restorative dentistry training from egypt and uh, she the bubbly uh, young periodontist who is absolutely passionate about teaching so uh, so you'll be hearing from tamima in just shortly uh, dr maisami and i would be taking care of the prosto and endo part which would be uh, about 20% of your course for m period and uh, a lot of you have asked me what would be the course fee as well so the course fee would be around 85000 and uh, we'll be restricting the first workshop just to 20 members uh, so that we can pay individual attention to each of you we've already had few uh, registrations already um, but this is going to be our first workshop and it's, it, this is actually a consist uh, fee Uh, our regular fee probably from 2024 would be a bit more so uh, this is the first year so it's it's, it's quite a, a good deal uh, to summarize um, i would like to say that uh, although this is a, just a 3 day exam we need to prepare for at least 3 to 6 months of if you're preparing for 3 months you need to prepare for 4 to 6 hours a day if you're preparing for um Uh, around 6 months then you can prepare for 1 to 2 hours a day depends on how long you want to uh, prepare for uh, whatever it is we realize that you know guidance helps you shorten the period of time and shorten the number of attempts that you need to prepare for this exam and uh, royal dream is dedicated and meant to provide the same for you okay so if you oh yeah just my ending comments i always like to say this uh, these exams might look little um difficult or maybe a little unachievable but then for any stage uh, for any uh, endeavor in life there are four p's that are very important one is 
Praveen. No, I'm sorry, I'm kidding. It's not Praveen. It's one is purpose. You need to have a very strong purpose, a definite purpose why you're doing this. It could be to prove yourself. It could be to prove it to others or whatever. Whatever your purpose is. Um, you need to have an organized plan. You need to plan. So here we can help you. So since we have given this before, we know how this works. We can actually make a plan for you and perceive. So even if you don't clear, do not lose confidence. You have to do it till you clear it, right? Perseverance because it can be done. And always surround yourself with positive people. Um, if, if you surround yourself with middle class mentality, you will stay there. You have to break out of it and be with people who you really want to be two years from now or three years from now, right? So I hope uh, you guys are inspired and hope you guys have a lot of doubts cleared. I'd like to leave you all with one short quote from Steve Jobs. That is, life is short. All right, you never know what's going to happen. Do what you like, what do what you love. Achieve all your dreams. Just do it with all that, all your heart. Okay. So uh, thank you all. Um, so we are located in Chennai at Microsmiles. Uh, I think most of you know it. Uh, if you guys have any doubts, you can reach out to us. So we also have this Facebook and Insta page called Microsmiles where we keep posting stuff. So you can reach out to us in uh, through this mail ID. Dr. Rangila is also here. She's our course coordinator. Uh, if you guys have any doubts, you can uh, get in touch with her uh, or you can mail me directly or you can WhatsApp me, you know, anything is fine. Um, so I'd like to in, uh, ask uh, Dr. Tamima to, you know, just give us her um, insight about her journey and, uh, um, you know, her experience with the exam so that you guys can learn something from an Imperio pass out herself. Dr. Tamima. Hi, doctor. How are you? I am good. How are you? Welcome. Fine. So, how are you? Tamima, I think everyone's excited to hear from uh, from your uh, from an Imperio uh, expert about your journey with the exam and uh, how did you prepare for the exam? You know. Uh, yeah. You yes. can, can um, I graduated in two thousand thirteen. Okay, I started my training program in 2015 till uh, to, uh, 20, 2019. Um, I took the exam uh, first time in 2019, but um, the exam was um, changed from 2018 to, to 2019. So it was somehow confusing for me. Um, so I needed to prepare more and to take the exam one more time. Um, in 2020 and 2021, there is no exam. So I prepared myself again to, to do it in 2022. Um, the, they do not need you to, um, to do four cases for the exam now. Uh, they only do... Um, more uh, cases and uh, more uh, viva and unseen cases. Um, so yeah. you need to prepare more clinically than uh, to, to know how to do diagnosis, investigations, management for these cases. Uh, you need to prepare yourself for this, uh, for, for cases more. Yeah, so Dr. Um, Dr. Mima's, uh brought up an important point. So right now you don't need to present any cases that you made. So don't, no, you don't have yes. to take photographs and show, send your cases to the Royal College. All you have to do is prepare for the unseen cases. They will be giving yes. you all the records. You have to go through it and give the viva. Yes, there are two types of cases. There are short or cases and the unseen cases. In short cases, there are eight, <laughs> where they give you only one photograph and you have to do uh, to, to answer diagnosis, investigation, and management, and like that. And there are uh, four unseen cases where they will give you all the, the documents and you need to prepare for 15 minutes. And then you, they will ask you for another 15 minutes. And uh, the exam now is four days, not three days. Uh, first day is the paper and the other three days for the uh, short and for the viva and the long cases. The unseen cases. 
Okay, so Tamima, how did uh, uh, you prepare for this exam? Um, uh, how, how many hours did you uh, spend before the exam? Or per day? Or how many um, months? For, for me, it took me uh, six to seven months to prepare, even maybe more. I study for uh, five to six hours per day. Okay. Um, I, 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 when I entered the exam in 2019, I felt like, as you said, they need you to study Indo and Prosto, not only Pario. So yeah. this was the confusing part for me that I need to study in other specialities, uh, other topics for the, the, these specialities. So I, um, that's why it took me that much of time to open all these other books and try to study them. And they ask you a lot about evidence uh, guidelines and these things also need time from with me to, to collect them and to study properly. Yes. So I, um, I think that uh, three months is enough, but they need to study more. They need to, um, maybe it will take them also six or seven months to prepare for the exam. Rista? Right. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, do you do do anyone have a specific question to ask Dr. Kamima? Any uh, doubts that yes. you'd like to ask uh, the Imperio uh, expert? Um, how many of you are periodontists here? I think Sajit, sir, you're a periodontist. Uh, Dr. Karthik, I know them, they're periodontists. Uh, Sajit, sir, so I think you're in the Middle East, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm in the Middle East, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, how, what do you think is the importance of Imperio in the country you're in? It has too much value, I feel like, uh, if you want to join some big hospitals or uh, big clinics and all, they prefer that uh, even if you have a, if you are better than the other dentists, if you have Imperio, that has more weightage to get yes. your CV accepted. Yes. So the, they just blindly pick it up. Just if you have some UK degree, yeah, this is the best candidate, and they just pick you up. I've seen many cases in that way. Mm. So rather than I know it might help us, but still uh, in job wise, yeah, it does make uh, big changes to accept your CV. And currently everything is digitalized here. So you cannot go and give your CV to or do your licensing exam. Everything is computerized now. Once you get, once you pass the exam, then only they'll consider accepting your uh, CV, most of the places. So right. even if, I think uh, um, diploma in implant dentistry, I think we have center in Dubai. I don't know about Imperio. I don't know. I don't have an idea. So Imperio, so, as you said, no. uh, Dubai, uh, and Edinburgh. Egypt is it? Egypt. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. No, I just want to ask Dr. Tamim, like, what are the books like? How to go about? What are the books and articles? What you have to study? Like, we when I give exams for the Middle East for the Abu Dhabi exam, it's called Department of Health (DOH). Uh, uh, first exam which I gave, it was like hardly some forty questions out of one hundred twenty questions. Forty questions was only on uh, article base. Like this author in this year, which I which we never expected. Like in Dubai exam, it was not the observe exam. Like this uh, author in this, uh, I, I remember one still one question. One question was like, uh, what was the mean distance from the uh, CJ from the first molar to the greater palatine foramen? There was one study for someone in 1980s or something, and they wanted to know that what was that. Uh, it might be significant for the LA purpose, but for a question for that in that exam. We, ne we never expect that. So such uh, very hard questions were there in my first attempt. Then later I, I, I noted down all those articles and the authors and then they came for the second attempt. Yeah, same questions, but uh, same article, but different questions from the same article had come. So I cleared exam. So it's that way, it was kind of tough. So I wanted to know like, is it more on article based or just clinical oriented or should we go through which all textbook we should go that way? I just wanted to know that. So uh, okay, for the textbook, uh, I studied from, uh, uh, you know, Linda. And, Linda, yeah, uh, Linda, yeah. Yes, 
and um, uh, their other book uh, called Atlas of Cosmotics. And uh, I will give me a minute. So, Sajid, that's a good question. In fact, uh, uh, I face a similar thing in Emendo. Uh, I, I had a, almost like a few questions from previous papers. We had a this collection of it. And I mm -hmm. was supposed to see that literally 60, 50 to 60% of the questions were exact repeats from the previous yeah, papers. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they have yeah. favorites. They, they always ask the same thing in a way. And in fact, when uh, my juniors were giving exams, I, I just told them this author, this articles, and they got different same questions. I mean, different, uh, same article, same author related, but uh, different questions. Yeah, so they yeah. were easily able to answer those. These exams always have a lot of repeats. So it's good to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do a lot of previous question papers. Yeah, true, true, true. Linde textbook, uh, Dr. Tamim, I have the textbooks, both the part one, part two, I have Linde. Uh, what yes, about the other the, textbook the, the you're saying? Edition, the last edition of Linde and uh, okay, also uh, the... Uh, uh, okay. Um, you know that the, from the dent, PDJ and the dental update for the papers. Yeah, okay. Okay. A clinical um, uh, journal of periodontology. Okay, okay. And also there's, uh, wait, I, for the implants, I studied from clinical implantology. Okay, okay. Do they, they do ask implant questions? Yes, a lot of implant questions. They, they always okay. have a case with uh, multiple missing teeth and you will oh. restore with implants or an RPD. Uh -huh. okay, so okay. you need to be prepared okay. for both. Okay, okay. okay. because and, it's a UK uh, exam, the only, only Linde textbook is the major, no need of Karanza, is it? I, I, I thought uh, I studied from Karanza, but it, um, it was a lot and um, I didn't like it that much. Linda was more okay, concentrating okay, okay. for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, the other okay, book is okay. called Atlas of Cosmotic and Reconstructive Periodontal Surgery. Edward Cohen. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Cohen. Yeah, yeah. But I have the, the I, yeah, I have the old edition, but uh -huh. my PG time it's almost uh -huh. five to eight years back. Yeah. You know, I studied from these books. They are enough for the exam. Yes. Okay. 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 Articles only from BDJ and the JCP, is it? Yes. That, that too, like uh, the last 10 years or how it is or, or the all the main articles, how did you go through? Um, I, I go through them by topics. If I, I want to study okay. topic, I try to uh, to get the topic, but I didn't uh, study for the 10 years, only five years. There are a lot of papers and uh, I didn't have that much of time. So only oh, okay. Okay. for okay. the last five years, maybe. Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, do you have number of attempts like for MPD or MNTO? How is it? Uh, yes, I have a reading list. I can oh. send it if you want. Four uh, attempts, Sajid. Oh, for okay. Four attempts, is it? Four attempts, yeah. Um, okay, okay. You're allowed four uh, attempts per exam, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, I mean, uh, if you're giving MBN, it's, it's a yearly base or like we have total no, no, four no, no. attempts in our four? No, totally four attempts only. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. And okay. if you pass Thank the you. paper, you. you can only take the oral part. You do not have to take all oh, the yeah, exam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. okay pass okay. one component, you, can, you only have to give the other component next year. Yes. So the next time only the other component has to be given. Yeah. Yes. So the in the written exam, how is it like uh, essay questions or how is it short short essays? How is it? It was short essay or... questions. Seven for okay. uh, hundred twenty minutes. Mostly cases, okay, okay, a big case and okay, and okay. short questions. Can you in... can you tell some uh, examples like how how the question like one or two questions how regarding what they were asked? Um, the exam was most like cases. They ask a, a lot about regeneration, about okay, um, okay recession like that this okay. is the topic okay. and in they ask all of everything okay 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 yeah. no is there anything like all those immunology cytokines tnf alpha all those something very deep in that way or just regeneration graph or uh, implants i, I didn't Sandra, i didn't uh, hear you well uh, no do they ask much in deep like tnf alpha cytokines all those 
molecular level or uh, just uh, the major surgical no, no, clinical no, no, no. aspect of <laughs> no the clinical aspect no no ah, okay, uh, okay 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 uh, 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 okay only clinical okay okay yes. nice okay okay yes. thank you thank you so much yeah welcome you back Th thank you praveen thank you yeah uh, hello doctor oh. i am dr arya Yeah, hi, Arya. Hello. Hi, Arya. Hi, Tommy. Yeah. I have some questions for you. Um, yes. Doctor, like, how do we start our preparation? Of course, there will be guidance from you people, but how do we start? Like, uh, because I, after completing my BD, it's almost five years now. I'm MDS. So yeah. Um. Okay. I'll tell you how I started. I started with the textbooks. Okay. Every topic. When I ended, uh, I start. Um, go for lenda and uh, these other books i started to open the papers um there are some papers a lot of them that are open you can open them um not uh, they are not closed you can open them online easily and you um, need to study them properly okay is there any specific like um uh, like did you go by uh, according to the questions or like each topic wise is there any important topic that that we should cover you know when i entered the exam i found that all the topics are important for them they will ask you at everything in par you when you open lenda the index you will find all the topics they ask you in everything in it everything okay. there are no important topics for them they ask you in everything because they are eight short cases or viva and four um unseen cases okay so they will ask you in everything you need to prepare for everything Okay, so ma'am, uh, while coming to the theory exam, how how are we supposed to write? Is it like uh, for MDS we give more emphasis on the landmark studies, quoting all each article? Is it the same way, or more of clinical like classification and all that? Um, the the MRD yes, MPARU is more clinical. I don't know how the MDS goes, but in MPARU it's more clinical. Even the paper is more about cases. Cases and do we have to like quote each like authors and all that? Because I just want um, to know whether we have to give uh, importance to the uh, studies also, landmark studies or just the theories enough. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat again? Like while preparing, should we give importance to the landmark studies or only the theory Land part is enough? For the landmarks, you say. Yeah, the authors and different. We do we have to quote different authors for each to justify that like evidence base. We have to do we have to address everything or only the theory part is enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that is important for sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just like our MDS preparation. Yeah. Finally, right. Pretty much the same. Just that uh, you know when you give uh, some mock exams, you'll realize that uh, a lot of questions get repeated and. Uh, if we, when we prepare it specific like we when we prepare for mds also we have previous question papers we prepare accordingly and uh, yes. stuff right so similarly it, it's the same here if you if you have few mock exams done it will help you a lot so that's the entire where can we get this uh, question bank or is there in, any facility like that's that with us. yeah so that's been collected from a lot of uh, previous candidates it's been curated oh. and we've made it like a like a study guide sort of a thing so we have it uh, so we give it to all our participants for the program okay so even for m period you have that uh, collected question banks right yeah. okay fine fine and so begin just be, before beginning of this program how should we prepare ourselves like uh, as you told you will be just guiding us but there definitely we need to prepare so with ahead should, of plan, uh, right? so every week we'll be taking a topic area and uh, we expect you to study that topic for that week if say for example if it's we're talking about perio aesthetic surgery that entire week we want you to go through the articles the books and everything regarding perio aesthetic surgery and make notes with it right okay okay uh, thank you doctor okay i think cost cost to doctor has asked what is the cost for the exam so the exam costs uh, 1600 pounds um yeah we we have, we have to pay for every attempt 
but all college is quite strict with that <laughs> uh, but uh, so but if you pay once and you have a family emergency or something or you're not prepared well and you say i want to give next attempt they will return the fee back and or they can shift it for the next exam so they are quite flexible that way uh doctor is there any um, like uh, difference in the passing percentage according to centers because i have heard some people say that dubai pass percentage is really less yeah. comparing to edinburgh yeah edinburgh has been better recently but we cannot say for how long it because it keeps changing every year we on an average it's around 30% in edinburgh pass percentage is better because most of them are uk graduates they know what is going to come all the they they have a lot of seniors who have given the exam so they are trained better yeah so uh, technically they're all the same all the three you will have the same almost similar pattern of exam same examiners and it it should be the same yeah okay so um so i think you guys have our contact details i would encourage everyone to you know post your contact details here as well we'll keep you posted regarding all the latest updates with the exams we in fact uh, inform everyone when the uh, uh, exam portal opens up because as you know the exam portal uh, opened up just about 2 weeks ago and then the exam seats got filled within one week or 10 days so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's getting a lot of demand nowadays these mndo and prosto and mperio exams so you need to book really fast once they open up so uh, you guys send in your contact or you know or you can reach out to us we'll be able to keep you in our broadcast so that you know we'll send it we'll send across all the important latest information quite uh, rapidly to you all is there any other uh, doubt that we can help you with okay so uh thank you dr tamina for your uh, uh for your valuable time i think you cleared thank a lot you, of doubts for a lot of our uh, participants um it was fun and uh, thank you all the participants for thank taking you. out time for joining today so um yep thank you for the uh, contact detail we will keep in touch so dr rangila will uh, I will help you directly with any um, doubts and queries that you have uh, please be in touch thank you all thank you sadit sir thank you all bye bye